All right, so we're in a new server, smaller server, hardly anyone here, so I'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit about vehicular combat. I'm also going to pick up my recon kit real quick. Let me just show you the gadgets that we have for that. We've got a basically a laser designator, so that allows you to uh, target like helicopters for supports if they don't have a stinger. Uh, allows you to target, obviously, tanks and things like that. Really cool. Motion sensor re makes a return in this game. Uh, you start off pretty much with the uh, rangefinder and the C4, though, so those you're going to be kind of a uh, spec ops kind of thing and now I really wish I could select a different weapon because I don't snipe I want to be able to use a shotgun or carbine anything other than a sniper rifle because I don't snipe I would rather use the recon class as exactly what it is a recon class rather than a sniper but that's okay uh, maybe that'll change in beta we'll see let's get into one of these helicopters I want to show you something about how the ammo system and the way this works so in the Battlefield 4, I feel like vehicular combat is much better than it was in Battlefield 3. So in the helicopter here, I've got my Hydra Dumbfire rockets like usual. I can hit my weapon swap to get heat seekers to fight air vehicles. All right, so not much different from 3. But here's the thing. Oh, here's the tower, by the way. Notice how clear it is without the tower being down. There's no smoke. You can see for miles. And there's a tower with a uh, advertisement playing on it. It's pretty damn cool. Now, it looks like the enemy has taken the tower, so we're going to have to do that. Vehicular combat feels like it's much more hardy. For example, tanks are actually tanks. You will take a beating, and you will dish out a beating. They don't feel like... Okay, apparently uh, Windows decided that it wants to bother me, and I had to cut out there for a moment. So tanks and BF3 never quite felt right, especially with all the automatic weaponry going around. Now, here's the thing, is... Ooh. Oh, that's going to kill me if he's able to lock on again. He's using that weapon I was telling you about, with, uh, that one-shots, helicopters. Oh, boy. All right, so you might be asking, well, if vehicles are really that hardy and they, they're taking pounding, because part of the problem with vehicles, right, is if they're too strong, infantry doesn't stand a chance. Well, yes, but they've balanced it out in a such a way that they've balanced it out with the ammo and how your weapons work. So if you look in the lower right-hand corner, you'll see I've only got two hydras left. I'm going to go ahead and reload those. And now I can... now I have 14. But you'll notice it says 14, 16. So that's my reserve ammo. I can reload 16 shots quickly. So if I go around and I fire, and I hit reload, I can get a bunch of shots back real fast. So I'm back up to 14 here. Now if I fire too much, and use up all my ammo, I'm going to have to wait to reload, and this is the same with tanks. Tanks get about five or six shells that they can fire in rapid succession. After that, they've got to start reloading them one at a time. And they have to basically build up the missile, or the, the shells. So I'll show you that a bit too. So what that does is that makes it so that fighting against infantry, they have to fire a little bit slower. They have to rely on their secondary weapons a bit more. Tank battles. I had a, a really awesome tank battle in this game because it, our battle went back and forth because both of us has ex had extended our primary amount of shells and we were basically going um, back and forth as to see who could hit each other with the reserve shells that we had left. And with the vehicle uh, health regeneration, because yes, that's back in this game, it was kind of difficult to kill each other. We were sitting there taking pot shots at each other and it was kind of hard to kill each other. Eventually I was able to take him out by flanking him and using some maneuvering. Which is kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, see, there's the uh, spot right there. It hasn't been caved in. Something just blew up. Uh-oh, someone's trying to knock down the building. Oh, they're trying to knock down the building. All right. This is actually perfect. Um, maybe not. Wow, blown up by a tank shell. Go figure. All 
All right, if he's doing like, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and spawn by this guy because I want to show you this. This is how it works. So I didn't get to go to the uh, the parts up top, but what he's doing is he's killing these four struts, these four supports. Every time one blows up, you get this loud boom, and you can kind of hear it throughout the entire map. And it looks like he's got them all. And so you're going to go ahead and see how this map changes, and it changes very quickly. Uh, there it goes, there it goes. Kind of hovers there for a moment, breaks down, and there it goes. That is seriously impressive, and it changes the map instantaneously. All right, let me go ahead and go to my rangefinder real quick. So I can mark him. So, rangefinder is not only useful for laser sighting and helping people use automated uh, tracking weapons, but let's look at the bottom again and see what the recon gets. So you've got your sniper rifle here. I've got my scope. Just like in Battlefield 3, if I hold down the trigger, it will uh, avoid doing the. So if I don't hold down the trigger, he'll very quickly, or maybe not. I guess they changed that functionality. Okay. But I can still see this. So I basically can see the side. If I click again, he'll reload. So there is that. I've got my bipod. So I can s steady it. Uh, you can still hold shift to... So you'll notice how there's sway. You can still hold the sprint key to stop the sway. But there's also the V. Instead of changing the, the way you fire, like instead of changing your rate of fire, V will change your zeroing of the sight. So you can zero your sight up to 200, 300, 4, 5, and 1,000 meters. And I've somehow accidentally activated the console. Let's turn that off. So th this is where the rangefinder comes in handy. If I had a scope with a range on it already, I'd be fine. But let's say I want to fire over here. And I can see that this distance here is about 255. Okay, cool. I'll go ahead and go back to my sniper rifle and make it about 200. Or I can make it 300. And that means that my scope should now be zeroed to compensate for the bullet drop for the targets at that range. This is very new to this series, and uh, it's pretty cool to see, really. I don't even snipe, and I think it's cool. I, I, I hate sniping. Aside from that, we have the T, which shows the zoom. I can change from 6x to 14x zoom on the fly. So if I hit here, I zoom in. So now you can equip powerful scopes without feeling like it's going to be an issue. All right, uh, very quickly, because we're getting assaulted, I'm going to go quick up this battle uh, pickup, like I mentioned. This is the grenade launcher. It has uh, 12... Grenade shells in it. Let's see if we can't do something with it. Nope. I missed. I missed too much. But as you can see, three shots real quick. I'm going to go ahead and reload it. Oh, it reloads all of them? It doesn't, reload, it doesn't have a shorter reload time. Yeah. If you use it right, though, I've one-shot people like crazy with this thing. I'm just kind of panicking right now. and trying to commentate at the same time. And it's not helping! Wow. That's okay. But at least I got to show you that there there was a pickup there, and uh, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, let me go ahead and demonstrate the tank shells, and, and I'll go ahead and call it on that, since I had mentioned those specifically. Now, those uh, struts, since I talked about those, keep in mind that those can only be blown up with high-end ordnance, so tank shells, C4, RPGs, uh, grenades, regular grenades aren't going to do it. So... Real quick, tank smoke still exists, but as you can see, it uh, it looks much cooler, by the way. You can actually see it go up, and it doesn't obscure your line of sight, really. It's just meant to be chaff to uh, prevent uh, enemy lock-on. And I like it and I dislike it, because I like it because it means I can actually fire it and still see out of it. But I also dislike it because I also used it to disorient human opponents before. So I, they'd be firing at me with their RPGs, and I would pop smoke so they couldn't see me anymore. So now, uh, people with RPGs have a better chance of taking out tanks. And I think that's really good because when I talked about tanks being hardier, that's probably a good thing. Because now that tanks are harder to take out, someone on the ground with an RPG is going to need that slight advantage to be able to compensate for it. 
So let's go ahead. I uh, have two weapons. I've got my coaxial machine gun. I have my primary weapon. Thankfully, they seem to be unlocked right at the beginning, so you have something to fight off infantry. You don't have to get a level one in a tank to become useful. You uh, get it right away. But look in the lower right. I've got one out of three, right? It takes a few seconds to reload. But notice how fire. Notice how fast I'm firing right now. I've got two reserve shells. And if you see the bar there, the reload bar, that'll show you how long I would have to wait if I didn't have a shell in reserve. So I'm going to go ahead and fire my last shell. And just watch how long this takes. So not only do I get the reserve shell, but then I have to wait for it to reload. So there we go, fired the shell. You have to wait a very long time for the tank to reload. I mean, this is going to really put uh, a, an interesting emphasis on tank combat, I think, for this game. Now, uh, to just go over it before uh, before I close up shop here, uh, let's talk about how they've changed the vehicle combat system since regenerative health is still in the game. Uh, they took out the system where you catch on fire when you're low on health. So you know when you would be low on health, you'd catch on fire, your vehicle would stop moving. If you were in a helicopter, you were pretty much dead. You had to either hope to land either hope to land in a place where you weren't getting shot at, or if you were in a jet, you pretty much bailed. And it really was a problem because it meant that it was very hard to get kills because once people got low on health, they usually just abandoned the vehicle. So you really didn't get many opportunities to finish off your prey. In this, they've replaced it with a critical hit system. If you take a lot of damage in one shot or in quick succession, you will obtain a critical hit. And that critical hit will disable your vehicle in some way. For example, the helicopters will lose rotor control and they will start... Um oh, come on. There we go. And they'll start to list and you'll, you won't be able to regain al altitude very easily. Tanks. I haven't really seen what tanks do. I imagine they lose their treads and can't move very quickly, just like in uh, 3. Oh, come on. But every vehicle has something that you can critically hit, and it doesn't. Ha they don't have to be low on health. I've taken a critical hit in my helicopter through uh, accidentally tapping something I shouldn't have too hard, being hit by... I got hit by an RPG. It didn't destroy my helicopter, but it knocked out my rotors, and uh, there was one time I almost died because of it. I was flying low, and I couldn't gain altitude. They were still shooting at me. I almost ran into the bridge, and I f it recovered at the last second, and I was able to gain altitude. So vehicle combat is very different. Vehicles are much more hardy, but they can also be disabled in some way in the middle of a fight, which is going to add some strategy to how you fight. So you want to be careful where you're hitting enemies. Like if you hit a tank in the treads, it's a little more likely to get a critical hit and be disabled. So you want to watch out for that. So all in all, I, I have to admit, I was very skeptical about this game. I was a little annoyed at DICE about certain things that had gone on. You know, I'm still a little miffed that, that my helicopters got just started feeling useless. I did like the ground combat in Battlefield 3 for the most part, though. Oh, too low. Right in the side. Okay, I'm trying to get him to hit my front armor while I'm trying to hit his side. There, right in the rear. Vehicle disabled. Vehicle mobility hit. Vehicle destroyed. Oh, come back here. Oh, another tank. That's cool, though. 
And you see you do take a few hits, and that's really nice. Uh, okay, one more thing, one more thing. Customize, because uh, this is important to vehicles as well. They've changed it up so that you don't have to make decisions on whether to have countermeasures or optics anymore. You can have, so we've got a primary weapon, so you will unlock other primary weapons. Now that's new. They're talking about high energy shells, which will do more damage, but have slower travel times, so you have to make your shots count better. Uh, you can, of course, have the coaxial and the guided shell. Uh, smoke, there may be other countermeasures there. Fire extinguisher is on the helicopters right now. Optics, different optics, but we also have upgrades like maintenance and thermo camo. Right now, not many people have uh, lock-on weapons, so I don't really need thermo camo. And you can even choose paint. This is, I mean, these are things you'll get from the uh, battle packs. So you can get different paints. Uh, and even gunners have unlockables now. So as a gunner, you can get a different zoom. You can get, uh, there's a proximity. You can choose between belt feeder or proc scan. So you can unlock features for being a co-pilot in a vehicle now, just like helicopters used to do. So in Battlefield 3, helicopters would always do that. Now you can do that for every vehicle. So, for example, the IFV, you can do the coax LMG or do a tow. We've got smoke, zoom. Again, not everything is active right now, so a lot of this is we're really not seeing much of anything. So proc scan and gunner belt, these, these are going to be very standard. They just haven't unlocked everything yet. Uh, boats, I believe boats will eventually get an AA weapon. Right now, all they have is, uh, here we go, passive radar, surface to air. So these boats can be lethal. They've intentionally made it that since boats are limited to only being in the water, they made boats very versatile. They can be deadly to, la to land vehicles with the tow and air vehicles with the passive radar, surface to air missile. Smoke screen. Okay, so we've got IR smoke. Smoke screen. Thick cloud of smoke that surrounds the vehicle. Impairing target acquisition makes it impossible for incoming missiles to achieve precise critically damaging shots. Interesting. I bet you that smoke screen is going to be similar to the old smoke in Battlefield 3 where you couldn't really see through it. That's pretty cool. Stealth jets. Those are the air-to-air -air jets. Uh, scout helicopters supposedly will be far more agile. Again, I really wish I had more vehicles to play with. I want to like Battlefield 4. From what everything I've seen, I want to like it. I think it could be cool. I just, I'm a little worried about balancing. They've always had some kind of issue. Every Battlefield game has had some kind of issue, a primary issue. And some of it has been in balancing. And I hope they do it right. I think I may actually get into Battlefield 4. I may go ahead and buy it. This map has been very fun. Knocking down that building has been very fun. Uh, it, it, of course, knocking down the building will get old after a while. But there's other maps where you can do things like flood the map. And things like that. So, well, you can even, look at it, you can even customize the transports. All it is is a skin, but I can make the transport be whatever color I want. That's hilarious. And you can see there it shows that it's a battle pack item. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, that's just kind of an overview of Battlefield. This is kind of a long one. I will uh, look into, uh, see for the fellas, you bastards. Um, uh, maybe I'll see if I can build some gameplay, just a solid set of gameplay doing one thing or another. And I'll put it back out. So hopefully you've enjoyed this overview, kind of a look at the changes here. It was a lot to talk about. So thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, one more thing. I know it's going to be a running joke, one more thing. One more thing, Jackie! Something that's in this game that's not in the beta right now, unfortunately, is the commander mode. So if we go into team setup here... I can leave my squad, I can go into commander mode, I can try and take command. Uh, it removes you as a foot soldier in the game, so unlike Battlefield 2's commander mode, you cannot play, and it's not in the uh, beta here, uh, you can't play as a foot soldier at all. So you can't be kind of a selfish commander going out, drop yourself supplies for you and things like that. You play almost RTS-like. And the way they're going to do this is they're going to tie in your commander assets to the points that you capture. So if I go out here, since you can't see them on this mode, what you want to look at is by each point there's kind of a, an icon. Alpha doesn't have anything, uh, but if we look at Bravo over here, you'll see there's kind of a little icon by it. It looks like the little UAV scanner from Battlefield 3. So Bravo would give me, if the my team captured it and I was the commander, Bravo here would give me a scanner, probably an infantry scanner, so I could see uh, where enemy infantry are. Uh, Delta over here, actually it might be a vehicle scanner because over here we have Delta with this icon, that's probably the infantry scanner. They have them separated. You can create a scanner that scans for infantry, scanner that scans for uh, 
uh, vehicles and they basically are on different cooldowns. Uh, Echo here has nothing, but Charlie has, Charlie is the center point. And this is why deciding to blow up the building or not can be a very uh, interesting choice because the building is, obviously it's a bit easier to attack here when everything's down because the attack point is all the way at the top of the skyscraper when it's up. But this, Charlie gives the cruise missile, which is kind of like the artillery strike from Battlefield 2. You can use it to fire on any position and do a massive amount of damage. Now the way this works is apparently it's going to be time-based. As your team does well and captures these assets, of course you lose assets if you lose points, but as they do well you start to get a resource uh, on this timer bar and each thing requires a certain amount of time. If you do things like uh, upgrade a squad, like you can upgrade a squad to their next level, like you saw the uh, squad icons I have that would give me boosts like armor and uh, things like that, you, the commander can choose to give that squad an upgrade to go to the next level. Something like that takes a little bit of time, and you can, like, if you had a full bar, you could do that multiple times. But something like the uh, cruise missile takes your entire resource. You have to build it all the way up, and then you use the entire thing in order to do a massive strike on one point, and that's how it's going to work. So that's all the real details I have. There's really not much out there because it's locked down in the beta, and again, it's basically on a blog site that I was able to get all that information. So uh, this time, certainly the last one. So thank you again, and ladies and gentlemen, I will see you on the battlefield.